Let my prayer rise before you, the psalmist writes. And yet sometimes it seems prayers sink more than rise. They sink to that base part of our being where words come at a premium, where feeling overwhelms our voice, where the pulse of pain or hope or desire or thanks dwells. Prayers sink to those places of our being and then give voice to the longing. In prayer we don't so much as change the mind of the divine as much as we are changed ourselves. Honesty will do that. And what is a prayer other than honesty? Deep, heartfelt, holy honesty, unleashed toward a God who has a soft spot for when creatures like us live honestly.
one of the things that really kind of irks me about prayer is how I think individualist capitalist society has turned prayer into like great like God granting wishes like a genie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Gosh, I, I pray Claus. for the yeah, it's Santa Claus. Prayer is actually a really powerful communal act. I think one of the reasons we do the prayers of the people, uh, the way we do them, is not only because they express the longing, but they remind us of what we need to long for, too. And I think there's so many ripples of longing that, yes, we do have like our individual longings, but we also have longings for our immediate communities and the communities that ripple out. I just keep thinking about Dr. King and justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, that that you know prayers are not this list for a divine genie they are like articulating that the world is hurting yeah and part of that articulation is i think when we are in times of deep prayer part of it is how does the word then become flesh that Prayers are not necessarily ether to just go out and become wisps of smoke. But I think there's something about prayer where when it becomes embodied, I think that's also the realization of like, be careful what you pray for. Yeah, right. Um, because what you pray for may actually literally rock your world. Yeah, there's, uh, there's that um, South American saying, um, you know, pray with your shoes on. Mm-hmm. Pray, but be prepared to be the answer to the prayer. Right, because praying for hunger to end, but then doing nothing personally to be part of that change, it's then it really is like it's a it's 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 kind of a, it's a gross prayer it's a to me it feels gross it's like kind of ugh. like you're just it's, it's like the you know when i was younger and i pray for the 49ers to win god doesn't give a shit about the san francisco 49ers come on catastrophe after man-made catastrophe particularly when it comes to firearms and the effectiveness of thoughts and prayers no kidding yeah yeah and and prayer should bring you heightened attention to something um you know it's it's like reverend william sloan coffin if i have compassion for the suffering of my neighbor but i'm not curious about the system that makes them suffer i am sentimental not loving and also just thinking about compassion because I think a lot of prayer is intertwined with compassion compassion is to have passion with right it is it is yet again not a solitary act it, it, it can't be done alone no. I, mean, I mean that's what I maybe appreciate the most about the prayers of the people liturgically is that it isn't done alone I think there's also something about the prayers of the people where it's a realization of hearing names spoken out loud as part of the communion of saints of yesterday, of today, of, of the ones who are to come. But it's also this realization of like, oh, this is where this is where I can turn my spiritual attention. This is where I can turn my spiritual energy because there is a sibling in need. And how can I then how can I then be part of the community to help meet that need. Because I think like oftentimes in the prayers of the people, I still read the prayers of the people from from my home congregation in Glendale, California, um, from my first call in Oakland, like, and also from my call at the Amy Zion Church, like I'm still connected to folks in prayer and realizing the folks who do need prayer. Um, And I think like that's actually been a, a way to maintain a connection to communities where like, yes, I've been physically apart from them for so long, but they are still very much in my heart and have formed me spiritually.
and the prayers that we get from the synod office, like realizing that there is also siblings in our immediate community, if we can help in the process of joy or comfort. Mm -hmm. As siblings in the faith, we are truly not alone. Like when somebody gets baptized, it's like, well, what next? And it's like, actually, you are now part of this big old bonkers family that will show up for you and pray for you. And part of praying is showing up. I also tie it a lot to the Eucharist when the words of institution, when Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And so for me, praying for my sibling is like, part of remembering is helping put back together and trying to figure out like how to help a sibling come to that fullness that they're seeking and yearning for yeah literally remember the members have fallen off so we're putting them back together Yeah. yeah and so at least you know for me having having prayer also being deeply tied to Eucharist. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, prayer is also difficult, though, uh, in a lot of ways, because especially if it's vocalized, like literally said aloud, because the minute you say something aloud, it, it takes on a different form in the world than when it's inside and unexpressed, you know, or not verbally expressed. Right. Well, and I think prayer is just so complicated because... The struggling perfectionist in me is always wondering, like, is there a perfect way to pray? Is there a, right. you know, in air quotes, right way to pray? And it's like, damn it, just pray. <laughs> no, but I think a lot of, I think a lot of us, a lot of people in the pews are, they, they have this sense of like, well, I don't know how to pray or, or somehow that the church leaders are professional prayers. Uh, when it's like, we're all amateurs when it comes to prayer. But I think that's another part of it, though, and I, I think uh, you're hinting at, at the thing that lots of folks don't really want to talk about, and that's uh, you know, prayer is really vulnerable. It's really intimate. Prayer is difficult because there are instances where it can go wrong. Sure. Um, you know, being witness to an instance where it was just kind of like, it was almost like a debate that was happening during the prayers of the people because one person had prayed for something it's like actually that's not the right prayer here's what you should be praying for and then it was just a back and forth and back and forth and back and forth you know it's like dear god thank you for the guns that protect us dear god save us from the guns that kill us like that actually that was the back and forth wow yeah like dear god thank you for the legislators who like make it possible for us to protect ourselves and dear god may we pray for the legislators who have been bought out by the gun lobby like that is actually what was happening you know at both sides should have just stopped it dear god yeah because yeah. that's probably the most honest prayer right there you know well and i think like i'm still really taken with Anne lamott's help thanks wow because it's like i think about like what are the prayers that i pray and oftentimes it's like god help me with this blah 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 mm -hmm. um God, thank you. God, thank you for helping like this football player make a touchdown. Um, <laughs> it, there are the the prayers of just like awesome wonder, but I wonder if we actually explore that enough too. And Tim, you're right. Like this goes into those vulnerable, squishy places where we oftentimes don't want to let people in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it takes something from us to enter into prayer. It asks something of us. I'm also thinking about the people who, in my life, who have used it as a weapon. Can I pray with you? Um, mm. it's, it's the number one way to feel superior to somebody. I'll pray for you. I wonder if we actually ask people, like, how can, like, first off, do you want me to pray for you? Right. And then second off, how can I enter into this space with you if you want me to be here? Yeah, it takes, it takes a lot of intention. Intentional prayer, gosh, isn't that a thought? Prayer is not just one thing. It's not just one experience. Yeah. Well, and it is the thing that, you know, it's the golden thread that connects all faith practice or faiths, right? 
there's not a faith out there that doesn't have some sort of embodied or or uh, some sort of prayer uh, that happens. Some kind Whether of reflection. Oh my god. 
also a solar eclipse before. Okay, I was wondering, I've never seen that little ray of fun. See that little round yeah, ray yeah. of fun? Yeah. That's wild. stayed away for the whole totality. I know. Today's worship is brought to you by the Anamkara community. One of the constellation of offerings by this new digital mission start of the North Carolina Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, visit anamkaracommunity.org. And if you trust that this work and content are meaningful for you, please give on our website under the gift tab. We know God is with us in this beautiful yet broken world. Thank you for being you. And thank you for being here. <laughs>